3D sketching in SOLIDWORKS can be quite tricky if you don't understand how it works and its concept. Now, while the result of some of the features on SOLIDWORKS and tools could end up being a 3D sketch, something like this, I am only referring to a 3D sketch that you purposely draw from scratch in this video. So I will also cover what 3D sketches are, how to work with 3D sketches, and lastly, why and when you should be working with a 3D sketch because they are not easy to work with and you only have to work with them when you really have to. So stay tuned because you're about to learn something new in this video. Welcome, I'm Aryan, and if you're new to my channel, I help engineers and creative minds to convert their ideas into real life solutions through learning SOLIDWORKS with a very easy approach so subscribe if this is for you. What are 3D sketches? A 3D sketch, unlike a 2D sketch, cannot be fit onto a 2D plane. It does not require a flat surface. It can be drawn directly onto a 3D space. Now, while some of the 3D sketches can fit onto a 2D plane, most of them don't. So the concept of working with them is more difficult because you need to maneuver and manipulate them in three different directions and fully defining them becomes a challenge, much harder than fully defining a 2D sketch. All right, let's make one example, and I want you to pay close attention to how I'm drawing it, because this is the how, all right? Let's go to the example. All right, for example, if you pay attention to this sketch that we have here, I have already drawn this. This is a 3D sketch, and it cannot fit onto one single plane. There is no single plane that can fit it onto itself. But before we get here, we have to start from an empty canvas. So you can exactly see the steps that I have taken to get here. This is an empty canvas. Unlike a 2D sketch, we don't need to select the plane first and go draw a 3D sketch. We can directly go to the sketch tab and pick 3D sketch. And now we're ready to draw. Before we do that, we need to pay attention to some important features. One, is the view that we are looking at. So this is, if you pay attention here, this is the XY plane that we are looking at and this is a perpendicular view, so it's fine. Whatever I draw here will be counted as a 3D sketch, even though it looks 2D because it's a circle, but it's a 3D sketch in nature and it's placed on the XY plane. The proof of that is when I rotate my screen, you can see it was on the XY. Now, let me just, make it normal to my screen, delete this whole thing and start again. I'm going to pick a line. Next to my mouse cursor, which now looks like a pencil, I see X, Y. It should tell me that whatever I'm going to draw right now is going to be placed on the X, Y plane, just like this. One line. The other line is also on X, Y, even though it might look that you're drawing 3D, all of what I'm doing right now can be fit onto the XY plane. Look. So let's go back, delete it again. So how do we actually draw something 3D? It's easy. There are two ways and I'm gonna teach you both of them. First of all, let's draw one straight line like this on the XY plane. Now at this point, I can rotate my angle without exiting my sketch mode. So I'm gonna hold the shift key on my keyboard and press the arrow key so my view rotates 90 degree. Now I'm looking at the YZ plane, as you can see both here and next to my mouse cursor. I go down and rotate it one more time. I'm back to XY and I am going to rotate it one more time and go to the ZX plane and close the sketch. So let's see what I just drew. This is what I did. By rotating it a couple of times, I was able to draw this sketch, which is 3D on different planes. Can I round the corners? Yes, I can. Can I do other stuff? I can do whatever I want to do, almost, just like a 2D sketch. Good. So. How do we actually get the hang of it? Because if I'm going to draw something like the one I showed you before, it could be a little bit more challenging, like this one. 
So let's go back one more time. I'm going to delete it again. The more I do it, the better you understand. We're going back to the XY plane. One line. I go up. Shift arrow to rotate. Go to the right. Shift arrow to rotate. Now, I am on the XY plane or a plane parallel to that. But here's the thing. If I place my point here, I'm going to get a different result than placing it onto my previous point. And I'm going to show you both methods and I will tell you why. So when I place my point somewhere new, not on a previously existing entity, my result, let's just press escape, looks like this. As you know, I went to the left, I went up, I rotated my view, I drew a straight line, rotated it again, and I placed the point somewhere new. Now from here, I can take it like this and then close my sketch, which almost looks like what I had. And from this point on, whatever is left is to make these two parallel, make them equal, and then everything works well. And then we have this. These two points could be along Z like that. And just if I round the edges, I start to get a result very similar to one I had. All right. So before I carry on further, I just delete it one more time and take it from the top. I'm going to recreate what I just did. Only this time, at this level, instead of placing the point somewhere new, I'm going to place it onto the previous point. So I don't have to um, add constraints to make them equal and along Z, right? Assuming. So I place it here. I can continue to draw it, but before I do that, I'm going to rotate my view and show you what happened. Even though I was on a different 2D plane within this 3D space but when I placed my next point on one of the previously existing entities it actually or literally takes that entity and it connects it to that so you don't want to do it you just want to place it next to that point and later on and go fix them by adding constraints like selecting them both and uh, making them be along the z-axis or y or x or whatever you want okay so we delete the last line we go back to where we were that is this angle sorry this angle we place a point close to that and then we place a point again close to this oh what happened why did this happen is it because i picked the previously wrong point again so if you face issues like this it's better to rotate your angle and draw it like this and then from this point you can go on and make these two again along z and these two you can make parallel i know i know we are facing some issues but now they're solved so this is how you take it the other method that I told you I will tell you is this. Whenever you press the spacebar on your keyboard, you get the orientation menu. One of the options that the orientation menu gives you is this. I can look at my sketch from four different angles, front, top, left. Obviously I can change each one of them, front, top, right, for example, and the trimetric. So this is the final result. I can maneuver my sketch like this. If I drag this point down, you see over here, we almost don't notice any change. Or if I go back, the change does not appear here, except that my hand is not stable and I go up and down. If I perfectly go to the left or right, there will be no change to the left view like this. Some of the drags are invalid and this is the result. You could work like this if you wish, or you could just keep rotating your sketch and see what you have done. Now, 
what can I do with a sketch like this? I'll just rebuild it and find out. One example would be swept boss or base. If I set it to circular profile, I could create a pipeline like this. If I want to create a rack or if I'm going to create a surface, I could do that as well. Although working with surfaces is not easy and your surface wouldn't come out perfect. As you can see, we have some warping here and to fix it, we need to add more sketches and use them as guide curves and therefore working with surfaces with a 3d sketch it's a very advanced topic and i don't want to go into that detail right now all right i just deleted my surface there is not much more to drawing 3d except that you keep practicing and you keep rotating your view maneuvering your sketches and your points to get the result that you want it's not that difficult you just have to get the hang of it so for example if i wanted to drag this I could, if I wanted to rotate my view and see that, oh, it's a mess, I could try to fix it. And if it doesn't fix, control Z back until it does, make sure you add the right constraints. I don't know, make these two equal, for example, and then keep playing with the elements that you wanna change. Don't just keep changing it and don't rotate your view because a 3D sketch is in three different dimensions. And if you only look at two dimensions at once and you keep changing it, the third dimension that it's not shown to you at that moment is also being changed. So make sure you look at it while you keep changing it. Don't just look at it like a 2D sketch. I wanna add a bonus point here. Once you understand how to prepare your base 3D sketch, you could use that as a very good foundation for weldments. So for example, I can use this for a pipe. ISO size doesn't matter. So as you can see, I'm adding a pipe around my 3D sketch in weldments. Let's just leave it at that. Done. Now. Let's do a quick example again. All right, I have another bonus point for you. If you know how to work with 3D sketches and you prepare something like what I just did, you could go to the world mints and create a structure for yourself. For example, we have four columns. Uh, I'm not really good at world mints, but this is the base of it. This is a very complicated topic to teach, I noticed after I tried many times to put it into a video because with 3D sketching, a lot of things go wrong. And to me, after 14 years of working with SolidWorks, being certified as a professional, it still comes as not easy. I mean, I can work with it. I do get my job done, <clears throat> but there is not a single time that I don't face something new that I haven't faced before. Sometimes it's very hard to expect what's going to happen for me. And I tried to put it into this video and I faced a lot of issues. So I kept it as simple as possible just to give you an idea how to approach it. I highly recommend working with 3D sketches, practice, especially if you're going to work with weldments and create structures, uh, 3D sketch is the base for it. Even when you go to the weldments tab, it already has a 3D sketch tool there. So knowing how to work with 3D sketches is the base for working with weldments in SOLIDWORKS. And a lot of you need to learn weldments. This is not a video for that, but in order to learn it, you need to master 3D sketching first. So. When do you work with 3D sketches? When you absolutely have to. For example, weldments. If you're going to create an odd geometry, I've had this experience, it was in a medical device, and there was not a single geometry that I could just say, all right, I could use this instead of 3D sketching. No, it had to be 3D sketching. So whenever you feel like you can work around or work with a 2D sketch, as a beginner, it's recommended. 
if you're higher than upper intermediate that's up to you you can make a better decision i don't have to make that decision for you but when you can prevent working with these sketches do when you absolutely have to this is how you approach it i hope you learned something new all right guys one more thing that i have to add that i add to all my videos because i am looking for serious solidworks learners if you're a student and if you really want to learn solidworks there are some habits that you have to get right from the beginning from the get-go and i have noticed almost all beginners who are kind of self-learning through youtube and their class at university they get it wrong and it causes you to waste a lot of time because you are doing what they told you or what you thought you should be doing and it's by no definitions effective or productive if you want to get it right if you want to build good habits and break your bad habits that i think you have already built spend one hour watch my webinar and i promise you after spending this one hour you can save multiple hours back in the weeks months and years to come every time you work with solidworks it's an investment on your time one hour for many thousands of hours for future guaranteed just do that favor to yourself i'm gonna put the link in the description below also on the top right corner of the screen click there go watch the webinar it's free and at the end there is a mini course also free only for those who watch the webinar to the end then there will be a download button below the webinar click there get your mini course it's not a any course man it has eight videos two assessments very well made and you can get it for free if you watch the webinar to the end so that's it don't forget to subscribe i'll try to make another video about 3d sketching and maybe explain it differently hopefully this week again see you soon